Two Rivers Talks is brought to you by Two Rivers Biz Starts. Also by Raleigh Point Economic Advising. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Whenever you're ready. Welcome to Two Rivers Talks with uh, Darla and Todd. I'm Todd. I'm Darla. And uh, we're your connection to all things Two Rivers. Uh, if you're from Two Rivers or thinking of moving to Two Rivers or used to live here and want to know what's going on, uh, we celebrate uh, all the great things that are happening in our, in our fair city. Uh, so uh, you'll find fun, news, art, music, a um, little bit of everything, and um, we're glad you're able to join us today. Um, we have uh, a couple of neat guests uh, coming up yes. today, uh, including uh, Mr. Jack Walsh, correct, uh, from the uh, the Two River City Council, president of the Two River City Council, and uh, local local artist and uh, Lakeshore artist guild member, uh, Ms. Jody Kuchar, correct. And uh, I think we're really looking forward to seeing them and having some great conversations uh, today. Um, but first of all, we've got news and local events we need to cover. Okay, that sounds great. Well, I'll get started with this, and um, just wanted to start off with the fact that the Two Rivers Police arrested a man Friday, December 14th, after they say he stole a large amount of money from Berserker's Tavern. Apparently, the suspect stole the money while a bartender was distracted, and then he fled the scene. Police set up a perimeter, and the suspect was found and taken into custody a short time later. All stolen money was accounted for and returned to the business. And the reason that I'm that we're bringing this up is because it was a very busy day for the Two Rivers Police Department because the incident at Berserkers happened um, on the same day when a 23-year-old female and a 27-year-old male were arrested very early in the morning after fleeing from an officer, ramming a squad car, and crashing into a power pole. And uh, that was a busy day. For that them. was a yeah. very busy day, and people were without power for I think it was two to three hours um, because they didn't know exactly when the power was going to be restored. School was canceled for that day, so I mean it affected everybody pretty much in the community. Mm -hmm. But we just wanted to give a huge shout out to the Two Rivers Police Department, um, to the outside agencies that were able to help our PD. Um, they had dogs that they used in order to apprehend suspects. And then also just the fact of the quick response of the um, Department of Public Works who were able to get out and barricade the roads after the accident and the hard work of the linemen at, um, at our electric department who were able to restore the power so quickly. So that's why we're bringing this up. Typically we are not hard news Right. I, I don't think we're ever going to be sort of like action news of Two Rivers or right, anything like that. Right. But but uh, but it's worth shouting out that the the, the, the local police did a really great job of, uh, of handling things as well as some of the other uh, local utilities and services. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No. Great. Great. Um, on to lighter subjects. Okay. Uh, we have a couple of really neat things going on. The uh, the tall the the tour of Holiday Lights is still happening. Uh, so you can check out the best displays in the Manitowoc Two Rivers area. Uh, you can find a map of, uh, of everything, an ever-expanding map, um, at uh, htrnews.com. Correct. And we'll have a link down in the, uh, the show notes for that. Right. And something that's, I think, really super cool that's coming up is going to be on Friday, December 28th at 7.30 p.m. at the Capitol Civic Center in Manitowoc. They will be holding a Let's Be Frank Christmas production called Schrader's Christmas. The story goes back to the 1930s at Schrader's department store in Two Rivers. It's the most wonderful time of the year, unless you're the Schrader brothers. The band of brothers and owners of the store, Neil, Hillary, and Gary Schrader, have fallen on hard times as they try to keep their family business thriving. Times have gotten so tough that they're even requiring their employees, Lisa, Amy, and newbie Sarah, to work on Christmas Eve. Maybe a salesman by the name of Clarence Jingle will be the answer to their prayers. Clarence is trying to sell the store employees on a newfangled toy called a slinky. It'll never catch on, I tells you. <laughs> I, I tells you. <laughs> 
Apparently, it's going to be all the rage and might help Schraders keep their doors open for years to come. To make matters worse, dramatic tension, a venture capitalist from Yonkers, Damien Crumpus, who has plans of his own to infiltrate and destroy Schraders. He has some rather interesting business practices for the Schraders to test out in their store. Will he ruin Christmas for the brothers and the city of Trivers? I, or we mean two rivers. Tune in. Stay tuned. The Friday, and December the 26th, 7.30 p.m. The right. Friday, December 28th. Oh, sorry, the 28th. I was 28th. misreading. The 28th. Right. Okay. And I believe tickets are available right now at the Capitol Civic Center. I so want to go see that those. That sounds awesome. Yeah. You know, because uh, <laughs> let's be frank, the Frank Productions, yeah. they're all over the state. Typically, they're Appleton. Yeah. But for them to want to focus on a Two Rivers business and to have kind of this spin on it, I think it's like super it's exciting. It's wonderful. Yeah. I, mean, I, I had first learned about them. I think they were doing a show around the Maribel Capes Hotel. And okay. And I ran into some of their YouTube videos there. So okay. Very inventive. A lot of, always a local angle to it. It's really exciting to see Schrader's oh, show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, so on to the city calendar. Yes. Uh, so, you should know that the, uh, the city is uh, closed on Christmas Eve. City Hall is closed on Christmas Eve and the day of Christmas right. uh, and New Year's Eve, New Year's Day as well, um, and that there is, uh, in effect, a winter parking ban suspension posted on the city website uh, as of December nineteenth, twenty eighteen, and um, so in light of current weather, the long range forecast, and citizen requests, we are suspending the winter parking ban until one a.m. on December twenty seventh. On December twenty sixth, the city will evaluate whether an extension through the New Year's holiday is appropriate. Right. And what I think is just crazy weird about this is right now, uh, Florida is just getting hit terribly. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I've seen, uh, I've seen recently, you know how when you're on Facebook and it'll say, well, here's your posts from a year ago. Mm -hmm. And I was reposting people's drone video or drone footage of snowstorm here. And we mm -hmm. were just blanketed. And right now, you can go out in your shirt sleeves. It's like 40, 40 degree weather out there. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. Very so interesting. Just make sure that you get out and enjoy this really nice weather. And maybe this um, the suspension on the parking ban um, will have, it'll continue through New Year's. But stay tuned and we'll try and get something up when we hear something. Yeah. And uh, Cool City Crime Prevention Committee We'll be meeting December 27th at 7 p.m. in the police department. And this committee is a group of citizens who gather to discuss and prevent crimes in the city, or to discuss how to prevent crimes in the city of Two Rivers. That's great. Uh, is, uh, is Officer McGruff going to be there? <laughs> you remember the dog? Yes. Yeah. If his outfit is out of the cleaners. <laughs> okay, okay. Very good, very good. Um, and then, of course, there is a city council meeting on Monday, January the 7th at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, in City Hall on the third floor in the council chambers. Agenda will be available online, and as usual, it will be streamed live up on, right. up on Facebook. Uh, right. So tune in and be active in your local government. And for Two Rivers Main Street, we're going to mention it probably just this one last time, and that is their um, raffle calendar, because it's by the by the time you see this, we're going to be very, very close to Christmas, and um, they, the calendar will still be available for purchase. It's just that we're getting to the point where we've talked about it quite a bit, and I think most people are aware. So this yeah. is the last shout-out for the calendar from Two Rivers Talks. But they're 20 bucks each. You can buy one here at the gallery, Dale Bro Jewelers, Seeds and Beans, over at Schrader's Department Store, and you can also purchase from directly from Two Rivers Main Street, which is located on the third floor in City Hall. Turning to uh, business, um, the uh, the Two Rivers Biz Starts group is uh, not having a meeting in December, uh, but we will be meeting. Uh, our, our kickoff uh, for January will be Wednesday. Sorry, no, that's not twenty sixth. It's going to be the the twenty third of January. Oh, um, I really messed that up. Lester Public Library. That's okay. We're getting it right on camera here. Okay. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's going to be uh, uh, January the twenty third. I'm pretty sure that's it. We'll double check it, but you know, please check our Facebook page for, right. for Two Rivers Biz Starts, um, or uh, go to tworiversbizstarts.com. Um, we will be having our in initial meeting of the year at uh, the Lester Public Library in the main meeting room. 
And the topic is going to be a really fun one. Um, it's going to be on networking to win for everybody, including introverts. Introverts right. too. Um, with I, I wasn't pointing to you as an introvert. I <laughs> Probably more of an introvert than you are. But uh, anyways, uh, Ryan Kauf uh, from UW-Green uh, Bay uh, is uh, going to be running this. Uh, it's sure to be a lot of fun. Um, he refers to himself as an extremely introverted work in progress, uh, lecturer of entrepreneurship at the UW-Green Bay. Really fun guy. He's, um, he's a, uh, since the beginning, a, a great supporter of uh, Two Rivers Biz Starts, and oh, we're, yes. we're really excited to have him. As our as our inaugural uh, guest of uh, 2019, I was I was wondering if that was a moniker the the work in, this work introverted in work in progress if that was a moniker that he gave himself or that you had taken the liberty. No, to I didn't take any liberties there. Okay. No, that, that was because I was had all to him. laugh yeah. when I read that. <laughs> so it, because he doesn't seem very introverted to me, but maybe he doesn't seem that way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we'll have to. Oh, we could let's heckle him. <laughs> Oh, no. sure, sure. That would go over really well. <laughs> just, to see him, just to see him kind of crawl inside himself. No, that would kind of ruin the evening, wouldn't it? It, it, it might defeat the purpose, but yeah. <laughs> I appreciate the humor of it. <laughs> All right. On, sorry about that. I don't... I, so there's other, there's other things going on at the Lester Public Library, of course. Right. 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 Um, first of all, Lester <laughs> Public Library, I'm so sorry, <laughs> is going to be closed both Christmas Eve and Christmas Day as well as New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Um, just wanted to mention some of the new movies, and I'm really excited about this. They have Reprisal, The Christmas Train, which is a really good little movie, Trafficked, which has uh, it's a lot of good information, and I think it's definitely well worth a watch, Slender Man, which scares the Indeed. heck out okay. of me, <laughs> Papillon, which is an oldie but goodie, mm -hmm. um, and Loving Pablo, which I think is about Pablo Picasso and one of his mistresses. Okay, interesting. So, sure to romance. Be a, a fun mm. romantic movie if somebody wants to sit down to that. Um, there are, of course, some other uh, adult grown up events uh, during the next three weeks. Uh, and they include uh, December the 18th uh, at 6 o'clock. Uh, there's going to be Book to Art. Of course, wait, that was yesterday, wasn't it? December the 18th. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> God, wait. <laughs> um, moving right along, January the 2nd at 4 o'clock, there's going to be a book discussion group. Um, the Curious Charms of Arthur Pepper uh, by Phaedra Patrick. Uh, and then January the 4th at 1 o'clock, uh, screening of Little Women. Right. Um, this movie is rated PG-13, uh, so nobody under the age of 13 will be admitted without an adult. No registration required, but Bring a Beverage and LPL will furnish the popcorn. And then finally, uh, January the 7th at 6.30 is the Strictly Fiction Book Club. Uh, and that's going to be about the storied life of A.J. Fickery uh, by Gabrielle Zevin. And I know nothing about these books. Me neither, but they sound interesting. I, they do. So, yeah. that's, they piqued my interest. Um, team programs during the next, uh, actually three weeks, um, the, the three weeks between this broadcast and our next one include um, on January 4th from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. TR Teen Night over at Leicester Public Library. It's for teens in 6th through 12th grades. Computers, video games, snacks, and hanging out. Per permission slips required and are available at the help desk uh, beginning December 26th, actually. And TRT Nights are an initiative of not only the library, but um, Two Rivers School District, and also Two Rivers Parks and Rec. And the initiative helps to provide safe and inexpensive activities for teens. Sounds like a good combo. Yeah, yeah it does. Very nice. Um, so on the topic of youth programming, uh, so the Two Rivers Schools, uh, they're going to be closed the 24th through January 2nd. Yay. <laughs> Um, and then the, uh, just we'll mention this one more time, the, right. uh, the Two Rivers High School Saruchi's Candy Bar Sale uh, is still ongoing. This is a fundraiser for European travel. And uh, we can cue the European vacation music uh, with that. Holidays. Maybe Jack will edit that in for us there. Okay. Um, <laughs> And the, uh, the social studies students are uh, going to be raising money for a trip to Italy 
in 2020 during the uh, the, uh, the spring break. Right. Uh, which sounds primo to me. <laughs> primo. <laughs> Mwah. Okay. Oh, is that a, oh and, Fantastico. <laughs> and the thing with the Sarugis is that they make really good stocking stuffers. They do. That's right. So we wanted to make sure we had we had one. Just don't put them by the active hot fireplace because then that could be <laughs> chocolate soup. It's a little, little <laughs> scary thing to find in your sock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> It'll look like it's bleeding. <laughs> or worse. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> moving right along. Um, on the sports side, there's going to be some swimming events coming up um, and then we'll have a link down the uh, and the Jubilee do for the uh, the school district calendar for more information. Okay. Jeez, so. <laughs> oh, I'm leaking again. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was hysterical. <laughs> All right, I, um, Two Rivers Senior Center. Um, it's going to be closed Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. It will be closed also on New Year's Day, but open on, on New Year's Eve okay. for a while. Okay. Um, because. At, they're going to be having a noon Year's Eve party. Not, not a midnight New right. Year's Eve, but at noon. Right. On New Year's Eve day. Noon Year's okay. Eve. Okay. Which noon is, Year's noon Eve. Noon Year's. <laughs> which is really hard to say without making a it, face. It is. I, I'm, I may need a couple of drinks for that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. All right. <laughs> Cut. We're heading over to the bar. We'll be back. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, it's going to be on Monday, December 31st at 11 a.m. Entertainment provided by jazz blues vocalist Aaron Krebs. Nice. Um, the seniors will be provided with hats, lays, punch, and snacks, and then um, with a festive roast beef lunch with mandarin orange cake. Oh, that sounds good. I know, yeah. which will be promptly served at noon. Promptly, I like that. I know. <laughs> it's like sit down, get your fork out, um, but you do need to call ahead and make a reservation. And we'll have that information down in the yeah. That's in, all in, down in, below in the show notes as well. Um, Thursday, December the twenty seventh. So before before that, um, right. Thursday, December the twenty seventh at ten a.m. Yahtzee. Yay! <laughs> Actually, that's that's a that's a really fun game. It so, is. Yeah. I haven't played that in a long time. Me neither. Yep. Um, oh, and we we do have some shout outs, um, some happy birthday shout outs to hey. some of our senior citizens. <clears throat> we have some Christmas babies, Mary Jo, Jean, Margaret, Mary Lou, and Carol. Happy birthday. Pretty and nice. you want to read off our New Year's babies? Our New Year's babies uh, are Anna, Sharon, and Dorothy. So happy birthday, girls. Happy birthday. Um, you want to take the Two Rivers Parks and Rec? Sure, sure. Okay. So the, uh, the Two Rivers Parks and Rec and the, uh, the Rec Community House uh, are going to be closing at 4 o'clock on Christmas Eve and on New Year's Eve. And they'll be closed both Christmas Day and New Year's Day. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as other events coming up uh, through Parks and Rec, uh, Ben's Ballroom, uh, Waltz, and Foxtrot Fundamentals, uh, if you want to get your ballroom dancing on. Uh, instructor Ben Press, uh, Studio BC in Manitowoc. Uh, we'll be holding some Monday evening instruction. Um, it's going to do before these in the month of January at the Community House Gym starting at 6 o'clock on January, January 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th. Uh, bring a friend and learn how to incorporate the music of dance into your daily routine. And uh, just click the Parks and Rec link uh, below in the show notes for a little bit more information on how to get involved. And I think maybe we should show up for this. You think so? For one of the Mondays, because okay. I didn't realize this until just the other day, because you finally told me. You revealed a side to yourself that I didn't know existed. <laughs> but um, you are very well versed in ballroom dancing. Well, I wouldn't other, say well versed, but. And I'm, other forms of I'm dance. I'm versed, okay. You're versed. I, You're better versed I, than I, me. I'm versed from time to time. <laughs> But I think it would be kind of fun to go over there and maybe you could give me a little instruction while he's trying to I could try. keep me from I could try. falling over. <laughs> well, we'll talk about it right, more, but I think that that would, that would uh, generate some pretty interesting footage yeah, for one of yeah. our future shows. Anyways, it sounds like a great event. It I does. Think, I think it's very worthwhile. And it's nice to see some dance uh, offered here in, in Two Rivers. Absolutely. And I've always, I've always wanted to try ballroom dancing, but it's I just never have. I, yeah. I don't know how to dance with a partner. Oh. Never learned, so I think it's about time. 
before Sounds my arthritis good. really kicks in and I can't do it no oh, more. Oh, come on. Oh, I'm getting there. <laughs> um, also at Two Rivers Parks and Rec over at the Community House, um, they are having a December open gym. Bored? Don't sit at home. Come to the Community House and spend time <laughs> sh shooting hoops. Hoops always come back at me like flapjacks. Shooting hoops. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and hanging out with friends. <laughs> It runs through December 28th. Children under 12 must be accompanied by an adult and click the Parks and Rec link below for more information. Fantastic. And, and um, uh, Parks and Rec also has some uh, classes for little ones, right? This is the Tot Picasso classes. Yeah. I, I love this. Um, Wednesdays from 11 a.m. to noon, uh, running from January 9th through the 23rd in the fireplace lobby. Um, children ages two to five that's got to be a hoot to, to yeah. see um, it's going to be fun and messy you know it's going to be fun if that's really going to be uh, in the description of the, of the event fun and messy children get the opportunity to explore their creative side with paint glue clay shaving cream and yeah. stamps stamps <laughs> I think with the ink. Oh, like the ink. Right, okay. It's like postage stamps. That, okay, <laughs> never mind. Um, yeah, the shaving cream has got me intrigued. I'm really interested to know what that's all about. Um, if you'd like to find out what that's all about, you can also follow the link down in the show notes. I think that that would be so much fun. And it's nice that they're going to have the really fireplace cute. on. Because if my kids were small, when they got there, I would just take everything off of them so that they could get as dirty as they wanted to without getting their clothes dirty. Sure. So considering what time of year it is and how chilly, chilly it is sure sure little naked children mm -hmm. next to the fireplace playing with shaving cream and having a really good time <laughs> that just didn't come out right did it well you know <laughs> but you know i mean easy cleanup you hose them off you take them home anyhow um on to restorative yoga it will be held uh sundays at 3 p.m uh running from january 6th through february 17th to be held on the second floor over at the rec department. Restorative yoga is the art of surrender, a beautiful practice on slowing down and opening the mind and body through through practice, practice stretching. Practice stretching, sure, sure. Uh, that's a typo. My fingers weren't Just working. Practice stretch. It was too cold for you. I you think so. You fireplace. Some kind <laughs> through through relaxing. I think it was supposed to be through relaxing stretching. Sorry about that. No, I, we, we get the idea, though, okay. right? It's, it, it's about slowing down, relaxing, surrendering to the moment, and just kind of and, right. stretching yourself out. Right. Sounds very good. And the restorative yoga will be followed at 4.30 p.m. by em embodying mindfulness with Patty Jo, who reminds us that mindful meditation is essential to surviving modern-day living. And very it nice. really is. Sometimes you just have to take the time to decompress. That's absolutely true. Well, uh, with that, I think we'll uh, we'll take a quick pause, and uh, we'll be coming back with our with our guests. And uh, in the meantime, everyone, namaste, and uh, we'll see you out there on the streets of Two Rivers. All right, see you in a bit. Hello, we're here with Ms. Jody Kuchar, a local artist and member of the Lakeshore Artist Guild. Uh, Jody, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for it's being nice on the show. Yeah. It's nice to have you come in finally. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Jody, your uh, your artwork is uh, here exclusively at the Basil Ishkabibble uh, Art Gallery. It is for now, yes. Um, I have some works being framed that I'm hoping to get out in other places soon. We're excited to talk about them a little bit and uh, a little bit about uh, what's brought you here and sort of what kind of things inspire you. Uh, um, but uh, you, you, you haven't always lived in Two Rivers, is that right? No, I uh, originally am from Chicago. Okay. And uh, lived a number of places across the country and ended up here after eight years in the Indianapolis area. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, and it's nice here. I know the area from working in Dirk County for many years. Okay. So um, that's how I ended up in Manitou. So you, you pass through on the way up to Door County right. and say, well, this looks like a charming place to live. And I always liked <laughs> it. I always liked all these little small lakefront communities. They're wonderful. Yeah, yeah. That was what attracted 
be here. Right. For sure. Because he's a transplant, I'm a transplant. A lot of our guests so far have been transplants. Yeah, so it hasn't been conscious. You know, that we, no, that, it that hasn't. It's just, it's just out. Right. And how long have you lived in Manitowoc? Just over five years ago. Okay. So it's been a little while. I'm learning my way around when I'm meeting a lot of good people. Right. Yeah. Well, there's a good scene going on in Manitowoc right now. Um, the food scene, art scene, poetry, spoken word scene. I mean, it's pretty spectacular. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit, um, a little bit more. Um, now, before you moved to Manitowoc, where were you living? Were you in Chicago at that time? No, the last place before Manitowoc was in Minneapolis. Okay. Um, but we, my husband and I lived in Racine, Kenosha, a place called Summers, and then we got moved to Indianapolis okay. for his job. Okay. And now he's retired, so we went. Time to find a place where we can recreate and live happily. Fantastic. And what is your connection to the West Coast? I lived there for about eight months. Okay. I lived in Oakland. Um, I was happy to leave because I don't like shaky ground. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, yeah, no, I, I was there in 1970-71, and it was oh, very shaky. Yeah, yeah I, I thought, I, I lived on a street where there was no truck traffic, and I kept going, well, those must be trucks. Then someone said, <laughs> no, there's no trucks on our street. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, so you were up in Oakland during the early 70s. I was in Los Angeles. And I remember in 71, we had a nine point something earthquake at our house down in LA. Mm. And I remember it waking me up. It was like three o'clock in the morning. I rolled out of bed, rolled under my bed. My parents come to find me. I wasn't in my bed and they were freaking out. So, but I know what you mean. Yeah, it's, uh, it was an interesting area. That, yeah. <laughs> How old were you? I would have been about nine years old, eight, nine years old at that yes. time. Yeah, but I just went under my bed. I don't know why. No one had ever taught me that. You know, but... Um, well, we're, we're glad you ended up here in Two Rivers anyways. And you too, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm actually very happy to be represented by Basin District. Oh, thank you. So it's, it's, I, I like the art. I'm I feel, so glad. Yeah, I feel happy. Good. Well, a lot of people say they get a pretty good vibe from the place. and. The pieces that we're going to be showing, that we'll be speaking about here in a while, are um, are fantastic. And I love your imagination and your creativity. And you brought some new artwork with you today that I haven't seen. So when we're when we're interviewing you and talking about your pieces, um, I'll be able to act surprised and actually be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate I appreciate that you like it. You know, it's it's. I've always admired performing artists because they do what they do and people clap and they know if they're good. If you paint or you do sculpture or something, you do what you do and you put it out there and you go, well, okay. Right. And so, you know, it is much more, it's, it's not as easy to find a place, a niche for your work. Right. Yeah. Now, have you been an artist all of your life? Probably, but I didn't make my money that way. Okay. Yeah. All right. When did you when did you kind of like get serious about it? When I, when we first my husband and I moved to uh, Kenosha, and I wasn't working. Okay. And I went, oh, okay. Um, somebody gave me a whole lot of art supplies. They gave me a potter's wheel oh, and my. and a kiln and slipware and really yeah. And I had all this stuff, and I went well okay, and I started to make stuff and sell stuff. Okay, that's fine. I'll do that. That's amazing. Well, I think you, you chose the right thing to do because your work is phenomenal. Well, thank you. And what inspires you? Oh. Well, let's, I'll come <laughs> back to that question when we're looking at your work because inspiration behind your pieces, I, I think, I'm. she has a feather headdress that we're going to be looking at that is out of this world. And that, I think, will be interesting to know what the inspiration is. So um, that, that's one of the things that's, that was kind of interesting to me. I mean, you're, the pieces that are represented here in the gallery um, are pretty diverse. I mean, you, you've got some tiny art. You've got you know the, the headdress. You've got the, the the slavery piece, which we're going to take a look at right. uh, as well. And I mean, the, the question of inspiration is very interesting. Is it the sort of thing like where you're you know awake in the middle of the night and you're thinking, oh, I got this idea, or is it 
you've got some materials on hand, you're like, I think I could do something with that. Uh, I think that's you know? more the way it is. Yeah. Uh, I think as artists we see something or we'll, I don't know, there's people who do the found objects, which I really love to do, but I don't do a lot of it because I don't go out looking for things, you know. People do rocks and, no, that's not me. But I, I'll find something and go, this is really pretty, I'll just hold on to it. Well, there, there's some more of that pretty, and suddenly I've got a bag of pretty. And like, <laughs> bag of pretty. What do you do with a bag of pretty? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll explain about the, the uh, mosaic piece and the bag of pretty. It probably lived in four houses before it got me. Okay. Yeah, it moved everywhere I went. I okay. packed it up and took it with. It just, it's just what, just what it, what seems cool. Right. I, and you kind of know what to hold on to. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's not, that's something that shouldn't be tossed out. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think it's different for everybody. What, I think it, there's an expression of one man's trash is another man's treasure. Sure, sure. And I, I yeah. think that's really quite true. And it's true for art as well. Oh, absolutely. And it's interesting how some of those things, they just kind of go along with you until you realize what they're for. I, I had a, an uncle who, uh, he did some carvings like with, with a chainsaw. He would do like okay. these little statues and stuff. And he always says like, "Yeah, I gotta see it in the wood, right? You know." Right. And you, you suddenly realize there's a purpose for a particular object that you see. Maybe it's been haunting you for a little while, right? It's true. I, the great sculptures say they can see the sculpture in the in the stone. And that's what we do. We do represent one sculptor um, here at the gallery, and. But that is exactly how he sees it. He will, he doesn't, what he does is he will take a piece of limestone and take the big hammer and chisel and chisel pieces off until he sees something that he can work with. But until then, he's just hacking away. And then it's like, then it reveals itself and then he gets down to detail. That's cool. So, and I think it takes a lot of guts just to take a hammer and chisel and just start pounding away at something that could fracture into a million pieces. I'd be like, one yeah. tap, it's broken. <laughs> it, it, it's yeah. gone. <laughs> it's um, spontaneous. It is, yeah. Um, and we wanted to, to discuss the Lakeshore Artists Guild with you, if you want to explain what that organization is and what it's all about. It really is a great organization, and I've been a member now, this will be the third year. Uh, when I first started, there were only like seven of us. I think there's now 25 members right. and the membership jumped up after we did the first tiny art shop at Broad West. And that was just this last um, summer? Or? No, that was in 2017. This was a little while ago. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that was last year. And we just, you saw many people come out who would never call themselves artists and they have these little creations and they bring them in and suddenly they're being represented at an art gallery, mm -hmm. which was so totally cool. Right. I, I thought that was the best thing ever because people, everybody has something that they do. Everybody has something that they do. And if you can bring that out in everybody, you've, it's a gift. It's right. just a gift. So yeah, the Lakeshore Art Artist Guild um, looks to create opportunities for artists to um, display their work, uh, they promote art, uh, they do education when possible. They branch out to you know, spoken word, um, when we did the Art Slams, Essen, uh, September. Yeah, it's still this year. Yeah, yeah I know. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's still this yeah, year. I went to that. It was a cool event. It was fun. Yeah. And we're planning for next year's already, the plans for next year's and the works. And that, uh, I sat in a couple of meetings back and that was great. Um, I'm like, really excited about that. There might be some adult type of stuff. Uh, and I'm just hoping that, uh, you know, we can. Uh, we can get the ball rolling. We have. I'd like to see performing arts happen. I think they're going to be taking Washington Park and doing their a uh, lot of work there and along Eighth Street instead of spread out like we were. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be uh, a lot of fun. So that's in its in its own way almost a plein air. It depends on where the artists sits up and what they're they're 
taking or what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, some of the artists that worked outside did a lot of prep work before. Okay. Okay, so uh, uh, Cheryl Mahal does the paper, painted paper, and she had to have all that stuff set up. But what she did is she went out and put the painted paper on architectural details. So that, oh. okay, so she was still doing her craft work, but doing it in relation to Manitowoc City. Um, so it was almost like a model. Yes, yes. Uh, Stephanie Carpenter had her small press in her trunk. She is, uh, she works at the Hamilton. Mm -hmm. What time? Uh, yeah, what time museum. museum. And she does a lot of classes, so she has a lot of this stuff for herself. And had it in the car and done it on the street. <laughs> Um, we had people doing wood turning. I mean, there was all sorts of stuff going on. It was great. Uh, felting. Okay. Wool felting. Really? Yeah. I mean, people did, had to prep for it, but I didn't do any art. I did something else. I did poetry. Okay. Poetry slant. So um, I wasn't part of the actual visual arts. I had to say no. Once in a while, you have yeah. to say no. Yeah. Otherwise, you would be even more busy than you are currently. Um, so there was the art slam, there was the tiny art show. I know that annually there is a, um, a get together for the entire guild. Um, for 2019, you'll be repeating the art slam and it sounds like it's gonna be broader and there's gonna be more things to do and see. Um, what are some other events that are coming up that you're aware of, or that you guys are at least in discussion? Um, well, there's, you know, it's really hard to say what else they have planned, but I don't really think there's a lot. We do have a fall show. We're looking at maybe a spring show. Okay. We're trying to, the Art Guild itself has a committee of people who are working to um, get into buildings that need art on the walls, businesses that right. need art on the walls. Oh, sure. um, so we're working on that, but we don't want to take on too much. The art slam was really difficult. It's, it's a big event. Yeah, it's really yeah. a big event. We did it on a shoestring. We literally did it on a shoestring. Um, it involved almost every segment of downtown, mm -hmm. from City Hall to and So yeah, they're kind of pulled back a little. Um, and I think that's probably good if we want to succeed in doing some of these larger events. Okay. And you are accepting new members? Yes. Yes, we are. Um, there's, there's, you can look up online, uh, Lakeshore Artists Guild. Weekly.com. Yeah, it's on We weekly. put it down in the show notes so uh, yes. anybody can get to it easily. Uh, so you can find it online and um, that would be the best way to okay. go about finding out about membership because you have to apply to be so, so so if, if you're if you're doing original artwork uh, as, as an artist you can join and uh, or if you're interested in maybe being a patron a patron the arts, there, there is a patron so support the arts everybody uh, if you have an idea or even a small donation that'd be a great thing to do yes that would be great okay. any kind of support to the arts is great and the arts make the community strong uh, this, we call it artwork. Well, art works. Art literally works. Right. It works for many things. It works for, for education. It works for therapy. Yeah. The it's many therapeutic. Things. It's it's good for your soul. And it's pretty. And it's pretty. Yeah. To go on your bag of pretty. <laughs> <laughs> bag of pretty. Yeah, that's right. That's All right. right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to shuffle ourselves over to where um, Jody's work is displayed here in the gallery. And uh, so we'll be right back and Jody will be talking about her artwork. So stay tuned. And we're back. And Jody, if you would just let us know about your pieces that are up in the gallery already and then discuss the new pieces that you brought in for me today, which by the way, I'm totally stoked by what you, what you showed up with because I really wanted a chicken. <laughs> well, we'll talk about the slavery one first. Bag of pretty. About 25 years of cutting up credit cards and putting them in a bag. And, but they're pretty. There are many colors. There's holograms. It's just nice. We, took, we, had them, we started this in our first house. We moved them to okay. here. 
and I eventually made the set of credit cards, and they are all ours. I was, we we had a discussion. Are are they all the Kachars credit cards that have been saved over the years, or did you get them from friends and family as no, well? No, they were it all, all their business and and personal cards. At one point in time during the eighties, you would get credit cards. They would send you credit right, cards, right. and we would go, we don't want these credit cards, so we would cut them up. But they were pretty, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cutting them up was something we learned to do from our past, uh, our previous experiences in the workplace. We were both collectors. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we cut like credit cards. We cut them oh, that's the sliding. But that's how that got made. Okay. And can you explain the meaning behind your piece? Well, um, credit cards, I have credit cards, we all have credit cards, they're good tools. They should not govern your finances, your economics, or your life. And pretty much I knew what I wanted to do with the pieces after the economy kind of crashed in 2008. I went, well, yeah, look, the average person's credit card debt was so huge right. that I was just amazed by that. And so that's how that piece came to be. Because I, I think it's great. It really captures the whole spirit. You know, it, the word is just, you don't want to be a slave to your finances no. and to a, a big conglomerate. No, and you know, if you think you're buying something, oh, I'll buy this side and pay it, and it, it, it costs you more than you had right. intended. So, right. you know, don't be doing stuff like that. Just don't do it. Yeah, don't Cut do them it. up and get your own bag of pretty. Get, get, get your own bag of pretty. <laughs> and then there's the other bag of pretty, and that would be the feathered wig. Right. These are feathers from our, my husband and I birds. We have two parents, and this is okay. their feathers over 20 years. Oh my God. So they, you know, they, they like constantly feathers. lose feathers. So you sure. just save the feathers? Yeah, I just pick them up, they're pretty. Yeah. So you put them in the back. <laughs> the bag pretty. Yeah. Okay. And well, <laughs> they, they, you like the birds, I mean, they're sure, feathers. Sure. And you know, for, these birds are in danger. They're threatened in the wild because loss of habitat and their plumage. They're killed for their plumage. Mm -hmm. It's like, just keep them, follow them around, pick them pick up. Them when the feathers them. fall out, pick them up. Why do they have to be killed? Well, so that's the wig. I really think I would like to put it on someday, but I'm not quite sure that I want those feather shafts sticking in my head. Right. Yeah. So. Well, you know, I, I mean, it's such a whimsical and fun piece uh, to, to see. And I, 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 I kind of think of this a little bit, but I always kind of think of like Phyllis Diller and how she would always kind of have those wild hairdresses and everything. I saw them like, oh, she would love that, you know. <laughs> I, and I never thought of it that yeah. way. I thought of it in terms of like uh, headdresses that get made for enormous. Oh, Mardi oh, Gras, yeah, sure, sure. big chief right. headdresses, and, yeah. and I went, well, those are really artistic. They're, they are. They're yeah. very, if you ever see any of them close up, they're beautifully done. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. I mean, I did, I would mind, I worked really hard to get it that way, and it took me a long time to figure out. I didn't figure out how to do it. Somebody gave me an idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's actually a real way with prints for um, extensions, right. hair extensions, and that's how the feathers are attached to them. And how many crimps are, are in there? I know there's over 500. So I think there's probably, I used a bag and a half of crimps. So there's that's probably amazing. close to about wow. 700 crimps. That's amazing. It was funny. Very My parents hate it too, so I'm going to leave it here. Okay. Because <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, they just hate it. Because I don't know what they think. I don't, I'm not sure what Yeah, they, they, they might be a little worried. You never know. <laughs> Mom made a new bird. Yeah. <laughs> a monster bird. A monster bird. Yeah. And then the book. Uh, the book was, I went to a workshop. I made a book. Okay, we, we handmade these books. And so I came home with two handmade books. And I put one in it. I've always loved uh, Book of Kelps. The illuminated manuscripts, right. mm -hmm. and that's what inspired the book. Okay. And little by little, it's been. It never was. Say, I never sat down and just did the book. Just little by little, okay. over time. So that's how that got done in the box. You have to have a box for the book, and that's how the box came to be. <laughs> it's, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. And now that's your own, um, your own original writing. 
yes. in the book. Unless it's otherwise attributed, yeah, it's my poetry okay. in there. So um, it's. It, I was involved with an art group in Door County long ago, and they used to say something like, "Oh well, writing isn't art." That it, we would not take a chapbook in the art gallery because it's not art. But if you handmade the book and then filled it with your poetry, okay. and I went, well, you know, I can do that, but now it's too late for you guys. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah I'll just keep it. So that's how. Oh, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. But uh, the last new pieces are um, bird, the two bird pictures, the chicken, is a friend of mine's chicken, and you know, she does very good close-ups, and I just loved it. So that's how that sweet pea. It's, it's the, the most sweet pea. That's sweet the name pea. of the that's the, the name chicken? of the bird. It's, yeah. it's the most tender portraiture of a chicken I've I ever seen. I know. Tender. <laughs> <laughs> the expression is it's it's priceless yeah. because it's looking at you very quizzically, yep. and it, it with intelligence too. I mean, <laughs> you captured this bird's soul. Birds are really smart. Okay, and chickens are really fun. If you ever get a chance to hang mm -hmm. out with chickens, they're a lot of fun. Um, they're strange, but they're they're <laughs> <a> lot of fun. <laughs> but they want to be like they want to cuddle, which is really? the oddest thing. Yeah, yeah, they do. I have to get around uh, chickens more because I was not aware of the, that they like to cuddle. I, I like oh, to eat their eggs. eggs. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. that's just a, that's just the uh, the icing on the cake. The chickens themselves are kind of fun. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but, and the other one, the morning dove, um, was done from a photograph of a friend that a friend of mine took, and uh, with her permission, I mm -hmm. did the watercolor Very because nice. I just love morning doves. Yes. I love. I like it when I call them wind up doves because when they take off, they go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and they are, they're so serene. I think they're one of the most peaceful birds. And I I told you before that that's my favorite bird is a morning dove, so I was really thrilled that you brought this piece in. I like them too. Uh, my husband and I are big bird, avid bird watchers, okay. and we do a, citizen, a lot of citizen science for birding. And so we have we have relationships with birds. I think that's wonderful. It's just weird. Interspecies inter -species relationships never work <laughs> out well, so my, <laughs> And this small piece is just something I did, I kind of did for the time year show okay. for this year. Uh, but that's yeah, that, that little way that, that it, it almost kind of has a Frank Lloyd Wright look to it, like a stained glass window or it kind of does tiny little geometric shapes. Um, I like I like that. Those make me happy. I'm thinking it should be big. Should be big. I think you should try something on a larger scale. I'm thinking that too, because I I love the colors and I like the geometry that's in it, and it's just. I, and I love stained glass, and that's what it reminded me of as well. But I, I, I could see something larger. I have to get better with acrylic. I'm not. I don't use acrylic that often. I, okay. I do like watercolor. It's just the ethereal thing with me. Um, it's it's that way. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Well, everything. Just everything. Just pick it up, and if it's fun, do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's wonderful. Well, thank you it so much great. for being with us here today. Yes, we really enjoyed it. Well, thank to you. Come back again as you have new pieces. Uh, you know, it's great to see you here in the gallery, and uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Well, oh, thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate. We'd love to see you. Thank nice. You. All right, and we will be right back and to wrap up the show. So, thank you very much. And we're back. Our uh, our next guest is uh, Mr. Jack Powell. 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 Time's the next job will be a telemarketer. I didn't even I didn't even have any wine. So. <laughs> 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 giving away our trade secrets right. now. Cut. Cut. <laughs> welcome back. Uh, we're really pleased to welcome our next guest, uh, Mr. Jack Powalish. Thank you, Jack. Uh, of uh, the Two Rivers City Council. Yes. Uh, very pleased to, to have you here today. Um, we want to hear all about you know your your life and connections here to Two Rivers and. Um, Okay. Uh, I understand there's some, you know, stories to tell about uh, your modeling career and <laughs> yes, uh, yes, some of the areas. So, uh, sure. well, shoot. Sure. Yeah. What would you like to know? <laughs> Fire away. Well, we can start off with your connection with Two Rivers. I was born in Two Rivers, 1961. I'm 57. I grew up on 43rd Street, which uh, back then was nothing but gravel roads and pine trees and the Tannery Club. Oh. Wow. It's Lanza's Tannery Club. 
but it was a great time to grow up in Two Rivers uh, back then. The city was so connected because of all the industry that was here. Everyone mm -hmm. either worked at Paragon or Hamilton's or Miro, and the communities, the blocks. We used to have block parties with circus tents and everything really? up there. Wow! And I mean, it was it was really a great time and a great place to grow up in. Uh, I, I love the small town. I love cities. I love going. I could never live there, <laughs> but uh, I just love Two Rivers. I mean, I couldn't wait to get back here after my schooling and getting my job training and things like that, and uh, I just love it. I, I love Two Rivers. I love the lake, the entire lake shore. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So you, you've been away from the area a couple times. Yes, I, uh, a couple times. I've been back now probably 22 years, 23. And uh, as I said, when I was gone, I couldn't wait to get back. And where were you when you, when you left? I went to school in Wausau. I worked in Wausau. I worked in Stevens Point. I saw I lived up there. Uh, I worked in radio. And then I came back to Two Rivers. That was my third radio job oh, wow. back when Q102 was live in the dentist office basement where Pizza Hut used to be. Or wow. next to Pizza Hut. Really? <laughs> we were in the basement, Fun Love and 15Q. That was no my kidding. third radio job. Yeah, I was the nighttime DJ. Oh, I'll be darned. And then they went automated, and the uh, person who uh, owned the radio station earned uh, owns stations in uh, Beloit, and he asked me if I wanted to you know, stay with the corporation, and I did. So I moved down to Beloit to further my, my craft. I moved down to Beloit for three and a half years. Beloit was uh, something to experience in, in the 80s. I, I, I'm glad I really? lived there. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm glad I lived there, but I couldn't wait to get the hell out of there. Really? Yeah, and I worked in, uh, to, uh, what else is down there? Uh, Janesville. Mm -hmm. So uh, and then I moved back to Manitowoc and then back to Two Rivers. So. Oh wow. I had opportunities to leave, leave the state for, for radio stations, even Minnesota, which is close, or Illinois. Mm -hmm. I just love Wisconsin. I just love the feeling of it. When I, when I cross the border into Illinois, my skin crawls. <laughs> okay, okay, you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't get me said, I hate the Bears, I hate the Cubs, and uh, I, love, I, I love Wisconsin. Don't take any offense, people, come on now. But uh, one, one man's opinion, that's all. It's all friendly ribbing, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Just all in, all in jest. So, so now, how did you end up making the transition from uh, working radio to public service? Because uh, you, you've been on the, on the uh, president of the the council for a while now, right? Well, yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. We run in one year terms. This this is my first year, which would be month seven or eight, I believe it is. I'm on my second term on council. Okay. And when I did get back to Two Rivers or the Lakeshore, I, I always wanted to be on city council. I just thought it incredibly interesting, knowing mm -hmm. what's going on, being a part of something. I didn't know a lot about politics other than what you watch on TV or hear on the news. And I paid attention to it, but I just wasn't involved, and it was always in the back of my mind that I wanted to get involved and mm -hmm. be a part of something that, it's a cliche that everybody throws out there, but I want to be a part of something and change something, but especially when Two Rivers, with, with the transition we're going through mm -hmm. with, with Thermal Fisher and you know the business is leaving, uh, I just thought it was the great time and I was I couldn't wait to get on there, and uh, that's why I went out, got my signatures, and that's 2000. 14, I think. 15. It's been that long now? Yeah, this is wow. my second term, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love it. I'm very, very happy to be on there. I'm glad I did it. Well, we're That's very great. fortunate to have you. You've, been, Thank you. you've um, proven to be a very well, I was going to say, proven to be a very competent president, <laughs> well, which you, you are, you know, but also you're a very dedicated uh, you. president and mm -hmm. council member. And there's been several times you've gone, you know, maybe not, maybe above and beyond. The call of duty might not be the exact term that should be used, but you you put yourself out there and you put a lot of your your own time and effort mm -hmm. into addressing different situations or issues, and um, I know that I appreciate that. Thank you. And I know other people on council do too, and hopefully that translates into appreciation from the community because. There's only so many hours in the day, and you work full time, mm -hmm. and you also have this other side career that you're going to tell us more about. Mm -hmm. um, plus, you have a family. Plus, mm -hmm. you have a life, you know. And it's mm -hmm. very easy for your life to be consumed by public service because there's so much that needs to be addressed and so much that needs to be done. 
but you 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 em, you embroil yourself into what matters well, yeah. and so um, I know I my opinion we're very fortunate to have you thank you that's very nice You're to welcome. Say. Well, again I you know we don't do it for the money you know that right that, that's for right. sure this oh, is, I heard that's where the big bucks are at <laughs> <laughs> you heard wrong yeah. <laughs> it, it's a minor st stipend that we get and uh, <laughs> You know, it's it's not for that. It's it is. It's I've just kind of made it part of my life where I get off work usually at five thirty. In this case, four thirty today, and I've got my routine. I run home, get changed, and right. I make it before six. And uh, it's 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 a fun thing to do. It really is. So mm -hmm. it's it's not a not an issue. And I'm glad I'm glad to do it. So so uh, being in this leadership role with the city council. Uh, uh, what, what for you is you know kind of most exciting? Most exciting, like what's happening right now in terms of what the, the council is working on, or sort of what's happening in the city. What's what's really energizing for you at the moment? Well, the, the thermal Fisher, Fisher situation is a, has been an ongoing uh, situation since I've been on, which has been over four years now. Mm -hmm. And there may be some light at the end of the tunnel with resolution to that, which is that's pretty, exciting. Pretty much all we can say. Okay, but. And I, and I want to point out to um, Two Rivers residents, the city does not own that property. So many people still think that, well, why mm. are we doing anything? Well, we don't own it. The, the guys out in Maine or wherever, Thermal Fisher, they still own the property. We are in negotiations with them to purchase it. But there are incredible legal strings, attached. strings and yeah. hoops and lawyers. And it's it's mind-blowing sometimes, isn't it, Darla? It is. <laughs> so, um, that, that's a big thing, and with <clears throat> what's been happening to the city as far as our, 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 our festivals and things, Kites Over Lake Michigan is a national it's huge. event. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Chow is just, wow, thank you. Thank you, Chow, so, so very much. Yeah, and it is spectacular. If, if, it if, is. You've, if you've never been to it, you owe it to yourself to get up to Two Rivers uh, and, and see it's in the fall. Labor uh, Day here. weekend, make plans, yes. And uh, like literally, on, on, there's just... It's like a thousand kites along mm -hmm. along the beach. It's mm -hmm. just really a sight to see. It is, yeah. and, and, and as a uh, someone who was born and raised here and coming back home, I love walking through and seeing where all the people are from. Mm -hmm. I stop and talk to them and say, "Well, you know, you're from North Dakota. How did you hear? Hey, how did you hear about it? Why did you come?" And then they, they, they said, "This town just blows me away. Mm -hmm. How nice it is. How friendly people are. How clean it is. How how quaint it is. And you know, they're, they're, they just love it. And that just makes me feel." Very proud of my hometown. Yeah. So you know, and and Ethnic Fest and all the other festivals. I'm sorry if I haven't named them all. And also our uh, look what uh, darla has been involved in with uh, the Two Rivers Pub. You know, and Basilish Kabibble. I mean, it, we're we are heading in the right direction. It feels that way. Yeah. You got to be optimistic. I'm very optimistic, and we are heading definitely in the right direction. Yeah. It, we we did turn a corner. Absolutely. I think so too. You know, it, and it seemed like, and I know I've said this in a previous episode. It seemed like we turned the corner overnight, but we, we didn't. It, there was a lot of effort behind it, but it was like one day, it was kind of like a ta-da moment. It was like, right. oh my God, we turned a corner. Right. You know, and that was the best feeling in the world. It is, and what, I want to remind people also, we will be, uh, not we, but uh, investors will be breaking ground on the brand new hotel in oh, yeah. spring of 2019. So that's... That's yeah. It's going to be it's a uh, lock. That's it's a lock. Yes. That is it's awesome. It's as good as a lock. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, Two Rivers, uh, check us out, man. It's uh, we are really on the uptick. I love We're it. going places. We are. We really. It's are. really cool. Yeah, it is. I, I'm, I'm I love so it. pumped. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it is. It's great. So, yeah. It's uh, nowhere to go but up, man. I mean, let's face it. When when a small town or any town or city loses industry, you know, our our small town is an anomaly. I mean, think about the industry that was here for literally over a century, yeah. and all of a sudden it's just gone. Not all of a sudden, but you know what I mean. And right. you know, you have to replace that somehow. And now it's a global economy. Back then, it was a very small world, and mm -hmm. the United States ran everything. Well, now, you know, you got to adjust. And uh, uh, electronics didn't exist when I was right. a kid forty years ago. And, you know, there was right. nothing. 
now look what it is. So we, we're, we're, we're looking to make adjustments. Well, there's so much potential here. And it's nice to oh, see yes. things about like the, the hotel being built mm -hmm. and the Thermal Fisher property, mm -hmm. you know, opening up to, for, for development, which will be an amazing thing I yeah. think, for, for the city. Uh, um, and, you know, and I, and I, I tell everybody, I know I, I lived in 20, I, I lived for 20 years down in Milwaukee before, before moving up here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that was just really striking to me was, why isn't there more business here? Like there's, like it's a beautiful location on the lakefront. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great place to live in terms of cost of living, um, beautiful parks. Yes. Um, and then there's just um, all kinds of potential. Like if you're a digital nomad, you know, you, do, you just do tech work or something like that. You could hunker down here, absolutely, enjoy the lakeshore every yeah, morning, right. and you're you're on an internet, uh, you know, fiber connection mm -hmm. with you know great great speeds here. Like you can have a pretty darn good life, absolutely, you know, in, a, in a city like this. And I, and I know, Darla, I think you said you had two hundred something likes or shares, or on on Basil's page or on this page. I think we're about at one hundred and fifty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you're out there when you watch this, tell your friends and you know share it because yeah, Two Rivers is a wonderful place to, to visit year round. Year round. New restaurants opening up, friendly people, hotel of just around the on the horizon. I know it's yeah. exciting. It is very exciting, <laughs> and I can't wait to see the cobblestone that goes up because <clears throat> we haven't seen the renderings yet, mm -hmm. and those have to be passed through city council. Right. We're going to have a chance to um, have a take a look and have a say, which is really <coughs> nice. And uh, mm -hmm. but from what they've done in other cities, it is very low key. It is mm -hmm. very chic. It is not your standard hot, mot, motel. It's more of a boutique. Kind it's of more of a boutique. Right. Yeah. And I mean, it's going to be, it's going to lend itself architecturally oh, yes. to our area. Right. 55 rooms? Yeah. Mm -hmm. With opportunity to grow <laughs> another floor. Right. So, I mean, okay, obviously the three of us have an open love letter to the city because yes. Yes. we're excited yes. about what's happening yes, here. But, um, but, I mean, it really is, and, and I think it's been due to the efforts of a you know dedicated group of people that really want to see things you know change for the better. Absolutely, and um, so that's why I, yeah, I, I don't brook any foolishness from people that are negative about the city because I, I think that everywhere I live, you know, when 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 I was in Milwaukee, they were down about like Chicago, you know, and you know when I was in Pittsburgh, they were down about Philadelphia, you know, or what, it was just always right. Th there's always sort of that the grass is always greener syndrome, you know, just get over it. I right. Mean, right. The, the, those big industries left they're not coming back right. but what made this city great from the beginning was that dedication to entrepreneurial spirit and building something new and creating something amazing and unique and i, and I think that's here in spades oh, gosh, it is. Yeah. and we need to get you over to one of the um two rivers biz starts meetings I'd love to. and when is the next one is january 23rd january the 23rd uh, ryan Kalt from uw green bay uh, the, Lecture on entrepreneurship. There's going to be uh, giving a talk on networking, well, even for introverts. Great. Right? So even for <laughs> introverts. Cool. I like that. But kind of, you know, you and I will. I'll, I'll <clears> touch <throat> base with you. Sure. But just to see, you know, that aspect mm -hmm. of it, and um, we have grown so much. And the thing right. is that a, a lot of people don't realize it. And it's. I was. I used to be before I went on city council. I was one of the biggest complainers. In the city. What? Oh, what do you mean? What? <laughs> you know me really well. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but you know, it was it was very easy to just sit back and be, uh, what do they call it, the, the uh, morning quarterback, mm. or Monday morning, Monday morning yeah. quarterback mm -hmm. for how the city was doing things. <clears throat> and it was so easy to point your finger and. Oh, they're a bunch of bums, and right. it's mm -hmm. like that's what, and that was my impetus for getting on city council. Is they're not doing it properly. I must, I must <laughs> assist, and I got on, and it's like, and I think I was of some assistance. Um, but the thing is, is then you get a, it's like a cold shower. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like this is how government works, and right. here's what is impeding our progress. Right. It's not internal, no, it's you not know, it's not our city manager. We have to deal with the feds, we have to deal with the state, we have to deal with outside agencies like right. DNR, and not, I'm not trying to badmouth anyone, but they have their rules and regs, right. and we have to follow have them, to followed, right? you know. And so you were talking about negativity, mm -hmm. and I used to be a super negative. I'm not now, now I'm a cheerleader. I don't look good in my cheerleading outfit, <laughs> but I am a cheerleader. And, but 
That, that's the darling I've always known. Yeah. That's, so. a, that's a visual for Christmas. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> the nightmare before Christmas. I'm just kidding. We, oh. used, we used to be friends. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. That's, uh, you know, you get involved and you, and you say, well, I'm going to change the world, you know. And then you kind of hit a screeching uh, halt. It's like, Ooh, you know, you want to you see things done. Believe me, I can assure everyone out there, all of us on council, and, and as Darla said, uh, Greg Buckley, we are doing every, and all department heads, no matter where, where they are in Two Rivers, we are doing everything we can to um, keep prices down, right. keep up with all the regulations that are handed down by the federal government. And it's a, it's a big struggle in a, in, a sm in a small city with a small budget, right. without, without mm -hmm. continually raising, you can't raise, you know, you can't live off property taxes as a city. So we, we, we look for other things to do. Right. We're, we're trying to head in a different direction and it's, and it's taking time to work in there. And so. I am starting to see more positivity. Absolutely. You yes. know, and, and that's, that's kind of like, you know, the, the germ of what Two Rivers Talks is. It's being positive. And looking at all of the good things that are happening, right? Good. Yeah. You know, and, and, and we're, I mean, we're not trying to be chirpy about it, but I no, but, but I think that we see the potential and we get fired up about right what's what's good right. that's happening. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I agree. So, yeah. what do you think the future holds? Future is extremely bright for Two Rivers. Again, when when the hotel was built, uh, I will truly believe that other investors, statewide, locally, and nationally, are going to hear about it and they're going to say, "Wow." This little town just got a six and a half million dollar hotel, brand new spanking hotel overlooking uh, two rivers that come in from a beautiful lake. And why are we not there? I think it's going to open yeah. up the floodgates, and I truly think the dominoes are going to fall, and it's going to see we're going to see things really these, take off. These things start with like a little bit of momentum, exactly, and, and they'll, they'll right. just build upon each other. It's so. just it's like yeah. a domino effect. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a rocket ride. Look out! So when is your term up? <laughs> I have. Uh, another year and a half yet. I think next year, in April. It, well, it would be April 2019. <coughs> would be your the no, beginning no, no, of your last. Beginning, yeah, it would be April. So 2020. 2020, I'm done. Would you run again? Absolutely. Absolutely. I am so glad to yeah, hear that. Absolutely. <laughs> and I really appreciate you being here today. It's my this pleasure. has been fantastic. Thank you. Um, before we go, though, you have to tell us just a smidge about your modeling career. <laughs> Well, it kind of takes the back seat right now to my full-time job at Eggers, but I, uh, I'm listed with an agency in Green Bay, a talent agency, First Choice Talent, and I've done online um, uh, many still shots for uh, web pages, as well as many Fleet Farm commercials and other commercials, and I nice. really, I really yes. enjoy doing that. It, it, it's a lot of fun. He gets this down really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do guys in those photos always hold on to the buttons on their cuffs? I don't know. Uh, because the director yeah. tells them to. I, I don't know. You don't do that. If the director, if what, oh, they pay, director. what they pay me, I'll do whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> they pay very well. Oh, the jobs pay very well. Good to know. Yeah. Okay. Have me back again, and I'll tell you. I'll tell you more. Okay? He's easy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> edit. <laughs> anyway, but seriously, thank you so Absolutely much. Absolutely, Darrell. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Todd. My yep. pleasure. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right, and two rivers. Thank you for watching. Thank you for putting up with our silliness. <laughs> but that is part of our ambiance. It's part of our promise to you to be extra silly. But, uh... And I think that we're, <laughs> we're fulfilling that promise. And uh, to whoever's, we'll see you on the streets. Bye-bye. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. <laughs>